Hey, I'm Tom. This is a sort of in-depth look at how copied points uses instance attributes to rotate, scale, and translate your copies. So this is just going to be like a sort of a tutorial looking at the different attributes that Houdini, Houdini uses and then how you can use them. Uh, I recommend checking this um, this docs page, so if I go paste this in, uh, you'll see orient p scale scale and up v rot p trans pivot transform. That's what we're going to be looking at. Um, these two we're not going to look at because. Um, sort of more for rendering purposes and they don't work in Karma so um, um, since they don't really work in USD we're not going to look at those but feel free to check them out looking at looking at orientation let's have a look at what I've built here so I've got this cube as you can see um, if I go to my orient here, sort of call it. I've called it the um, the box based on this gnomon. So blue is the z axis, y is green, and then red is z uh, x. Sorry. So that's what I've done with my cube. It's grey aside from positive z is blue, green is positive y, positive x is red. Then I've got some points and we're gonna copy these boxes to these points and sort of see what uh, how you can orient them. So Houdini uses the z-axis as forward and the y-axis is up so by default this is the values you will get. Z is gonna be set to I mean n is going to be set to 0, 0, 1 and then up is going to be set to 0, 1, 0, right? And so if I look at my boxes, they're oriented the way they are. And if I by bypass this, then I get the exact same result because these are the default values. But if I sort of change this to minus 1, say, you'll see that the blue face will be facing minus 1. So that's how that works because orientation in 3D needs two vectors or a quaternion or a matrix so let's look at the quaternion which is orient so I've created orient here based on z-axis which would be 0, 0, 001 so these are the d default values right it creates this and then cast it to a matrix I mean I make a matrix out of these two vectors with the make transform and then cast that to quaternion with the quaternion function now you can see that I've got this uh, I'm visualizing orient here and so this gives, gives me base orientation if I were to say okay y axis is minus one then you'll see green face is now facing down right you can add another quaternion which is which is p at rot and in this case um, I've got my up and my z set up and then I've added this quaternion which I'm making so I'm, I'm going to be rotating along this normal, yeah, the z-axis. And so if I visualize my cubes here and I play with this slider, you can see that I'm rotating around that. So rot is very useful if you say you copy lines onto spheres and you want them to rotate around the normal. All right. So since z is forward, my line is pointing in the z direction that's why I can get this with these normals if I were to put my line pointing up then you can see that you get this result so 
keep that in mind if you want to maybe instance flowers on a sphere then they have to be pointing in the z direction right just imagine this is a flower for example then obviously you've got the transform matrix um, in this case I could make it a 3 by 3 matrix it would still work um, So all I'm doing is the same as in the orient example, but I'm not casting the quaternion. Now we can look at scale. Scale is fairly straightforward. There is three attributes. There is p scale, which you probably know uh, by now, which is a uniform scale on all of your copies. I can make a random one with attribute adjust float, pretty neat HDA. That comes with Houdini now. Um, you've got scale, which is the same, but it's non-uniform, so it has to be a vector. That's important. And P scale is actually a multiplier on your scale as well. So if you have scale, we can then set a P scale as well. And that will scale uniformly on top of the scale. So if I plug this in, you can see that if I set this to 2 for example, there you go. And then again you can use transform matrix and then basically here I'm creating an identity matrix scaling by the scale vector I've created which is this parameter and then assigning that to transform in this in this case you could also use a 3 by 3 matrix All right. now translation uh, I've included pivot here but it's not really translation but it could be but it's here I've added it here um, but if you go to the, I've closed the docs page, but if you go to the docs page, it will tell you that if you've got a 4x4 matrix, so transform, that will override everything aside from P and um, pivot and also trans as well. So keep that in mind. This, override, this will override your scale attributes and your rotation attributes. So you can set the pivot. Um, this will basically, when you copy the box onto this point, it will first subtract this pivot, then do the transformations, then translate it to the point. We'll see that later when I uh, show you sort of how copy points kind of works. So in this case, let's have a look at trans, which is basically a translation it will add to, um, basically when you use copy points, you will take your box, Add the position of that point to the box and then trans will be added on top of that so if I set this to 1 you can see if I increase this or decrease this you can see the box is moving right again you can do that with the transform attribute in this case I'm um, building a matrix and then translating by this vector I've created here and then assigning that to transform. Last thing I'm going to look at is this variant attribute which is a string or integer attribute you can have on your points and then if you have a geometry library like here I've got Flippy, Squabby and Piggy they all, they all have a variant attribute so you can see flip is 0, then piggy is 1, squabby is 2. So if I look at my pieces here, I've used attribute from pieces to get the attribute over. It's a pretty cool HDA. Um, you can see that 0 is going to be flippy, 1 is going to be piggy, 2 is going to be squabby. That's how, how it works. So in copied points now, you can see that that's how it works. And you need to remember to, you need to remember to take this piece attribute um, toggle here and specify the name of your attribute, which has to be an int or a string. 
because that's how you know for sure you can match both because uh, you know float and float precision errors and now we are sort of uh, I've built my own copy points using vex so you can kind of see how it works under the hood so this is the result you can see I'm using copy points here and I'm using uh, the wrangle here inside of the loop and basically what I'm doing here is I'm fetching these points uh, using setting a p scale setting a scale setting a rotation the rot attribute setting the trans attribute setting the orient attribute pivot and then copy to points right so if I look at this wrangle what I'm the first thing I'm doing is I'm fetching all these attributes that I've created so p scale orient position pivot rot scale and trans and then um, uh, assigning my current position to end pause. First thing I'm doing is then subtracting the pivot. I'm then scaling. So I'm doing end pause, which is my current position, right? And then I'm multiplying that by scale multiplied by p scale. Then I'm rotating. I'm using q rotate, and I'm first I'm multi q multiplying rot and orient. Uh, and then I'm rotating end pause by that quaternion. Once that is done, I'm then translating using position plus trans, and then I'm finally assigning to V at P. And now if I, for example, rotate these around, these will rotate around, I can adjust the scale, just like that, P scale, and everything works just the way it should be. Oh, I can't guarantee that this is what happens uh, uh, in copied points. Uh, more of there's probably more stuff that happens, obviously, because if you don't have these attributes, then they're not being fetched, etc., etc. But this is basically uh, the bulk of what's happening under the hood. Um, yeah, I hope that was informative, and if you have any questions, reach out to me. Uh, link to my I'll, I'll, my Discord handle is in the description. I'll also put this file on my GitHub if you want to have a look, and uh, cheers!